of physics and mathematics of the universe of the universe of the University of Tokyo. Are you there, Masaito? Uh, yes. Very good. Hi. I, uh, I, I, so the speakers receive a medal, and so I will uh, virtually hand you a medal. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And you can see it uh, probably. I don't know if you can see it, but it is here. <laughs> okay, thank you. So Masaito's uh, title is uh, Quiver Youngians and Crystal Melting, I see. Okay, please. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you everybody can hear me. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so if you don't hear me, please let me know. So, uh, and also it turns out that there is an internet, uh, let's see, uh, uh, kind of a maintenance coming in an hour. Uh, it shouldn't affect my talk, but if something happens, uh, 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 I, I need to reconnect, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. But let's see, let me first thank the organizers for uh, organizing this workshop for this difficult time, and it's, it's unfortunate that I, I cannot make it. Uh, but uh, I hope that I will get back to normal soon. And so this talk is about uh, Kuiper Young Yans and crystal melting. And this is a working collaboration uh, with Bailey and also Dima Garakov. Uh, and so we, we, the first paper is in March last year. And uh, so this, this is a paper we introduced the uh, algebra and then we, we derived the algebra from more physics arguments in the second paper. And now uh, we have another, yet another paper uh, uh, on, that, uh, uh, on the same topic where we generalized the uh, uh, representations. And uh, certainly there are a lot of talks. Uh, let's see, there are a lot of uh, related works in the literature, which I'm going to mention. And, and also, uh, many of the technical ingredients is based on my earlier paper with Hiroshi Oguri when I was a student and uh, summarized in my thesis. So let me begin with some overview. Um, well, so this is a session of integrable models. And what's nice about integral models is that integral model sits at the intersection of various different things, uh, in particular, algebra, uh, which I mean by Youngians and things like that. And, uh, and of course, the representation theory of that. Uh, but it's also the case that we have other ingredients. For example, uh, sometimes combinatorial structure appears. There is underlying geometry. And uh, so that's the story of geometric representation theory, et cetera. So these are um, uh, uh, all related to these integral models in one way or another. And it's also the case that there are a lot of physics inputs. Sometimes combinatorics come from statistical mechanical model, or uh, they come from gay series and string series. So this is a recurring theme in integral models. And my talk today can be regarded as an example of this phenomenon. And in my talk, I'm going to talk about a new algebra, which you can regard as a, a building block for a new integrable structure, uh, in the sense that it's a generalization of the Youngian. And we call it a shifted quiver Youngian. Shifted just means some generalization, which I'm coming to later. So what is a quiver Youngian? So as the name suggests, it's associated with Q, the quiver, and so hence the notation, and it also depends on extra data, W, which is a potential, which I'm going to introduce later. And the screamer Yangyang is a generalization of affine Yangyang. So Yangyang associated with the affine uh, real algebra. And so as the name suggests, it's associated with the quiver and the super potential. So if you're a physicist, you can think of it as a defining data for some supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So this is a new set of algebras. And um, we also have a representations for them, which is actually highly non-trivial representations. So, and, and the representation is constructed by uh, starting with some statistical mechanical model of crystal melting. Here, it's found by this lambda, where lambda denotes the crystal. And uh, so we, we have a, some representation space doubled by elements of the crystal. And the shifted query onion acts on this crystal melting, so it gives us a representation. So in that sense, there is a nice new algebra, a uh, kind of integral model structure. And then there is a representation acting on combinatorial structure. And again, this crystal melting uh, is, can be derived starting with supersymmetric quantum mechanics. Well, finally, if you're interested in the geometrical aspect, it's also the case that there is underlying geometry. And the underlying geometry, in this case, is the toric Calabria 3 -4. Uh, so combinatorially, it's associated with um, a convex polytope, lattice polytope, in two dimensions. 
And uh, there are a lot of interesting enumerative invariants people have discussed. For example, Donaldson Thomas invariants, uh, or uh, also known as the BPS state counting in physics term, and the wall crossing, et cetera, has been discussed. And these are represented by Christa Merck. And it turns out that the partition function for this uh, BPS state counting, Donaldson Thomas counting problems, can be regarded as a character of this uh, shift equilibrium. And eventually, everything comes from string theory, although I'm not fo focusing too much on string theory aspect today. So let me start with the definition of the Quiberyangian introduced in these papers. So in order to define this algebra, we need to start with the quiver and, and the superpotential. And quiver and superpotential uh, is, in my talks, are associated with the toric curve C force, although the definition itself works more generally. So, Okay, so what is the example for the quiver? The simplest example is this one, the first line. The quiver is a one node quiver with three arrows, which I denote the X, Y, Z. And the potential, super potential is trace X, Y, Z minus X, Z, Y. And the meaning of this is that if you differentiate this with district X, Y, Z, et cetera, for example, if you differentiate with district X, you get the equation like Y, Z equal to Z, Y. So Z and Y commute. Uh, so it turns out that all these three commute if you impose that Jacobian with respect to this potential, and that represents the C3, the flat uh, Calabria geometry. And similarly, uh, you can have another example. This is the second line. You have two nodes and then two arrows in between, and you have some potential. And it is known that it corresponds to conifold. Um, so if you're a mathematician, you might know from this some work of Vandenberg about non committed Crepard resolution. Uh, this is also discussed in physics in the uh, ADS CFT correspondence by Crepard of Witten, for example. But in any case, uh, it corresponds to conifold geometry. So, it, uh, and, uh, and, and furthermore, there is one more example. Uh, this is a four node quiver with eight arrows in between with some complicated super potential. And it turns out that this geometry represents the canonical bundle over P1 times P1, which is also a uh, toric Calabria of three, no, uh, three four. So there is an algorithm for writing down these pairs of quiver and potential. And once you have this pair of quiver and potential, there is associated moduli space which reduce the original toric Calabria C. Uh, for this purpose, uh, for the purpose of my talk, you can regard Q and W as an input. Now, uh, there is a, once given this uh, Q and W, you can assign extra parameters, which I call the equivalent parameters, and denoted by H. So the equivalent parameters are associated with the edges of the quiver, which I denote I, so hence the notation HI. So for example, in the first line, there is for associated C3 example, there are three arrows. So uh, there are three parameters, H1, H2, H3, for each of the X, Y, Z. And then it should be consistent with the super potential, meaning that the sum of this uh, equivalent weights should sum up to zero. So in this case, the sum of H is equal to zero. So there are three parameters with one constraint. And similarly, uh, in the second example, we have four arrows, so four parameters, but then there is a constraint that super potential has net weight zero. So then in this case, it keeps like one constraint, leaving three parameters unspecified. So these are the parameters I call the equivalent weights. So hopefully, so far it's very clear. So Q and W, and then equivalent parameters are associated with them. Now, what are the generators? Uh, so I'm kind of going to define the algebra, so I need the generators and relations. So what are the generators? So the generators are given here. So it's like a Shubari type generators. And there is an index A where A is the quiver vertex. So for each vertex of the quiver, there is a set of uh, Shubari generators, E, F, and Psi, where Psi is a Cartan part. And each of these generators are uh, uh, functions of the spectral parameter, formal function of the spectral parameter, which I denote as Z. Uh, so it's just like a young uh, But then you, you, so you can expand with this, this spectral parameter to obtain infinitely many, mold, uh, many molds, uh, E and A, F and A, et cetera. And for E and F, the sum runs from zero to infinity, but for Psi, it runs from minus infinity to infinity. So it's kind of double. Sometimes people call it a Cartan double. And you can try to truncate it to finite expression. So you can start, you can say that this starts on some finite number, minus k, for example. And in this case, case you can say that it's a k-shifted equilibrium. So there is a shift you can introduce if you like. Uh, so k-shifted Yangian is contained in the most general case with n equals to minus infinity. So in any case, these are the generators. And the final ingredient is z2 gradient. 
So this can be uh, going to be something like a super real algebra, uh, but it's not a real algebra, but uh, there is a Z2 gradient. And, uh, and the Z2 gradient is determined um, uh, to be zero or one, depending on whether there is an auto starting and ending at the same vertex. So th this is represented by uh, the bottom. So for example, in this case, uh, there are three arrows. There is at least one arrow. In, in these two cases, there is one arrow coming back and forth, uh, coming back to the same vertex. So these are even, so grading zero. Uh, but there are other uh, vertices where there is no such arrow. In this case, you declare that uh, it's, it has uh, grading one. So it's like a fermion. Now, uh, you can define the relations uh, in, the, uh, in the algebra. So, uh, so, okay, so this is the final relation. So here we start, you define the generators and then we have the relations. So size and Fs, so we have all sorts of combinations. Here, there's a bracket. So this is a super commutator. So uh, it's a commutator when uh, both are, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an anti-commutator when both are odd, otherwise it's a commutator. And, uh, and Z and W is a uh, spectral parameters and Delta, I forgot to say, is Z minus W. So it's a difference between two spectral parameters. And, and then there are some factors. Um, uh, uh, okay, so for example, for psi says that the psi is mutually commute, but psi is in these, there is a function B, bar phi. What is this bar phi? It's defined here, and I call it the bonding factor. And the uh, bonding factor is some rational function. And uh, so it's a product of all the edges uh, from A to B. Uh, and, uh, and, and then for each of these uh, rational numerator and denominator, it either has a pole or zero. And the pole is determined by the equivalent weight of that uh, edge. So recall that I introduced the equivalent weight. So these are the parameters associated with the edges. And, uh, and so these are the, so, and they specify for each arrow from A to B, uh, there is associate B to A, there is associate zero, and A to B, there is associate pole. So this represents the definition of this function. Uh, so up to this function, they commute. Sometimes there is a Z2 grading. So you have to be careful with the plus minus sign. Uh, so I hope I explained everything except that the, there is an equality. So equality here means that, uh, okay, so these identities you, you're supposed to interpret uh, by expanding Z and W. So recall that each of these generators, you can expand with the suspect of parameters. And when you expand, you have to be careful up to which times you, you uh, impose the condition. And uh, so depending on these uh, different types of equality, you get slightly more stronger uh, condition, for example, here in this case. Uh, but in any case, so you can expand this comp very complicated uh, this, this things and obtain very complicated uh, commutation relations. So, but it's easier to remember this way. So this is the definition of the algebra, uh, which there seems to be a new algebra, new algebraic structure we introduced in our paper. Now, uh, what is the uh, special cases? So what are the special cases? So the special case associates C3 geometry. So that's the case, uh, as I introduced before, this particular quiver with particular potential. And it turns out that in this case, if you work out this particular case, it corresponds to a fine Yang of GL1, uh, GL1 hat, Yang of GL1 hat, uh, which is discussed in uh, uh, many, many people. Uh, uh, well, in fact, Miki, Ding, Yuhara, et cetera, they, they discussed a quantum droid version and and later people defined the harmonization, et cetera. Uh, uh, in, perhaps I should mention Fagin as well, for example. Fagin symbolic protest. Uh, many, many people have suddenly talked about that. And this algebra itself, people also discussed uh, in connection with AGT, Mori Kokonkov, uh, Schickman Bacero, et, et cetera. So there are a lot of discussions of this algebra. Now, uh, for the 24 case, uh, this is another example which described earlier. In this case, it turns out that it's, uh, it gives like a fine young of GL1 slash 1. So it's a least super algebra. And, and, and similarly, uh, you can start with more general quiver, uh, sorry, more general toric parameter C4, which is described by this equation, xy equals z to n, w to m. So if you have four complex parameters with one complex equation. So we're leaving three complex parameters. So it's a threefold and it's parabial. And in the toric diagram is like this. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, this equation. And then associated, uh, if you if you define a uh, workout uh, uh, algebra, it's, it's the least super algebra. Uh, and, and, uh, but the point is that uh, if you discuss general Tory Caribbean 3, uh, you get some algebra, which uh, is defined in, in the previous pages. Uh, but in these cases, there is no, uh, nothing like a finite dimensional simple real algebra associated with, or even a fine version. 
And, and, and uh, so it's very interesting, in my opinion, to try to study the representation theory properties of this algebra, new algebra, and what uh, type of algebra it is. Now, uh, for me, what, what's, of course, I just defined it. Uh, but the motivation for this comes from twofold. First of all, I can construct a well-defined representation of, the, uh, of this algebra, which ensures the consistency uh, of this uh, algebra. And second, it, you can derive it actually starting from some underlying uh, quiver quantum mechanics and gauge theories. So let me first discuss the representation theory part. And, and the representation uses the uh, crystal melting. And, and the word crystal melting appears is probably best, best known in the case of the uh, frame partition, 3D partition. Uh, so it's something like this. Uh, and and it's taken, you, you take a set of boxes from the corner. And hopefully the definition is obvious from this picture. And, and the way to see that is that, okay, for the C3 case, this is the quiver for C3. So there are three arrows. And, and uh, there's a nice correspondence between this quiver and this picture of the frame partition in that you can start with some vertex. In this case, there's just one vertex. You take that vertex and, and you draw X and Y, Z, et cetera, uh, uh, along some directions. And each of these equivalent weights have uh, X, X, Y, Z, three arrows has equivalent weights. So you can actually draw this uh, set of arrows depending on the equivalent weight. So equivalent weights is like a two-dimensional coordinate system. So there are three parameters with one constraint. So there, there was two-dimensional parameter space. So you can draw these arrows on the two-dimensional frame. And uh, so you can start with some particular vertex and draw a set of paths. And sometimes you, you end up in the same place because uh, for example, x, y, and y, x, if you go around the square in a different ways, you arrive at the same point. But that's represented by this uh, relation arising from this Jacobian of the potential, which says that in this case, that x, y, and y, x commute, for example. So the lesson is that if you start with some, some particular vertex and consider all the possible paths, modulo the relations coming from super potential, and then you draw some two dimensional picture and if you lap drift it naturally, you get some uh, three-dimensional picture. And from here, you can start uh, growing the crystal. And it turns out that this story generalizes uh, to an arbitrary toric carbon threefold. And this is what I did with uh, Hiroshi Oguri uh, some time ago. And, and in the end, the story is exactly the same, although the pictures themselves are complicated. And so, uh, so this is another example. So this is the example associated with uh, affine energy of gear two slash one. And, uh, and but the, the point is that whatever the toric carbon simple, there is associated quiver and relations you can write now. Uh, and, uh, and, and starting with this, uh, you can sign equivalent weights, et cetera. And, and you can choose a particular vertex and draw a set of all possible paths from the vertex. Again, modulo the Jacobian relations. And for each pass, uh, it has a definite equivalent weight. So it defines the points uh, on the uh, two-dimensional plane, and if you uplift it, uh, you can define a crystal like this. So this is, uh, uh, it looks intimidating, but it follows exactly the same type of logic and define the crystal. And the geometrical underpinning of these are, uh, is that uh, these actually arise from some fixed point of the torus fixed points of the moduli space. And that's why these are relevant for uh, donaldson thomas invariants. Uh, for now, uh, for this purpose, this gives a, a set of states uh, relevant for uh, 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 Chris, uh, representation of the quiver Yangian. And uh, so this itself is a vacuum crystal where nothing is taken, but you can start taking the crystal. For example, there is a top atom here. You can take one. And you, then the next step is to take another atom whenever it, whichever one is connected. In this case, uh, there are three different choices. Um, so you keep taking the atoms from top. And, uh, and then that defines the molten crystal configurations, which is a generalization of the 3D partition. And, and from given this uh, such a crystal melting representation, and then through the melting, you can construct a representation of the fever ganglia, which I introduced earlier. And, uh, and so the, this formula looks a little bit complicated, but the structure is simple. So first of all, what is K is the uh, configuration of the molten crystal. So it, I, I call it the crystal. So a set of finite set of atoms taken from that vacuum crystal, which I showed earlier. So, and then there is a Schubert generator. Psi just acting on the state with some particular factor. Uh, but E and F are Schubert generators. So as you might expect, uh, it increases the atom by one. So whenever A, there is a color. So whenever you can, uh, so here, I forgot to say that there are three different colors because in this case, there are three different vertices. And it's a similar story in general cases. So there are as many a number of colors as the number of vertices of the quiver. 
So if you start with a path and then from a vertex, it ends on some vertex. You go around uh, on the square, it ends on some other vertex. So if you, uh, so depending on what, what the endpoint vertex is, you can associate different colors, which is shown here. So um, so for, for this uh, Shubari generators, there's a source Shubari generator, EA. Uh, for each vertex, there is associated uh, the raising operator. And whenever you add, you can add an atom to the crystal of that color, uh, there is a, it contributes non trivial to the sum. Uh, so it, it increases the atom. So that's what shown by here, K plus A, where plus means to add the atom. And, uh, and similarly for the F generator, which removes the atom. Now, uh, another crucial part is that uh, it's spectral parameter dependence. So here, if you look at it, uh, there is a pole at that location. So whenever you can add, for example, or remove atom, there is a corresponding pole uh, in the spectral parameter. And somewhat correlated with that, uh, there are a concrete expression for this uh, uh, for these numerical factors, which I haven't talked about yet. So this psi is the eigenvalue of the Cartan generator, and it's a product of this bar phi, which introduced earlier. So this this is the bonding factor which appeared in the uh, representation. Uh, uh, in the definition of the algebra itself. And there is some piece which I'm coming to uh, in the next slide. And, uh, and and the point is that there are extra poles for each other atoms you can add or remove, there's a pole. And, and then you can take the residue with respect to, of, of this function outside and take a square root, et cetera. So that's this factor E and F, which appears in the definition of this algebra. And so, okay, so in the definition of the representation. And uh, so this is a concrete formula and uh, you can use this formula and just check the commutation relations and see, uh, prove directly that it is a well-defined representation uh, of the uh, quiver angle. Now, so this gives, uh, uh, well, let's see, uh, one representation. Uh, so uh, if you take the, uh, the psi zero to be some particular form, which is like a one over z. So, uh, okay, so there's this psi zero, which is shown here, which is extra ingredient, which I haven't shown. Uh, and so suppose that uh, this, this thing has a one over Z, in the spectral parameter dependence. And that means that there is, it, it has a pole at Z equals zero. And because that I said that pole always corresponds to some atoms which you can add or remove. And that means that when it has a pole at Z equals zero, it means that uh, you can start uh, in the very first step when acting on the vacuum. So when acting on nothing, no atoms are taken, you associate it this factor. So it has a pole and you can start growing the atom from here. So we call it a starter. And then from there, you can start growing the power, whole power of the states. So this is like a highest weight state. But now we can do more complicated stuff. That's what I noticed, uh, what we noticed in our recent paper. So we can try to have two starters. Instead of having just one highest weight state, we can start with, start with the two starters and start growing the crystal. And at some point they might begin to overlap and, uh, and, and in which case you might want to uh, eliminate the duplications. And in that case, you want to eliminate that and that's done by including this uh, factor in the numerator, which is this zero, which eliminates uh, unwanted poles. So this uh, vacuum charge function takes this form, uh, one zero and then two poles. Uh, well, we can also do other things. For example, we can have a uh, uh, crystal here uh, and uh, and then another so starting from the this starter at z equals zero uh, coming to the pole and, and then we can try to uh, stop stop the growth of the crystal by uh, placing a stop bar here uh, which is this zero at z equals zd another point so uh, so this is these are some examples and as you might imagine uh, having a uh, arbitrary starters at arbitrary positions and also uh, poles and stop etc at uh, at general locations. Basically, by doing that, you can construct a lot of general shape of the crystal and use that for representation. So the set, set of all possible representations is actually gigantic. And, and it turns out that uh, these contain some representations, uh, not for the representation, some uh, counting problems. People haven't discussed representations, but people have discussed the counting problems in association with the donson thomas invariance. So uh, donson thomas invariance, so for uh, BPS state counting, there are various different versions. Uh, so for example, you can discuss the wall crossings and depending, uh, okay, so then the answers do change and you get the different crystal shapes. Uh, in this case, it's a finite, infinite, finite, finite size and, uh, and, and those are the combinatorial or answer-wise, enumerative counting-wise, these are represented by this uh, crystal, finite and infinite. 
And uh, these are regarded as a uh, special case of, of special classes of, of the representation of people started. So, uh, well, as far as I know, all the representations, uh, uh, all the counting problem people considered before uh, fits into our framework. So, uh, wall crossing can be represented as a change of the representation. Now, uh, not only we reproduce the uh, uh, known representations, uh, known counting problems, but it also construct, we also constructed some representations which seems to have no counterpart, at least in the literature, uh, as far as the Caribbean 3 uh, uh, BPS or state or Donald Thomas countings are concerned. For example, even for C3, the trivial geometry, we can have a representation where this let things uh, stop first. So we stop the growth of the crystal here. Or in the Conifold case, uh, the, the, people, the thing we people discussed are either infinite in both directions or finite. Uh, but you can also consider the semi-finite uh, representations. And these are well-defined representations. Um, and, uh, and so uh, it, it's, in it's interesting to see if there is any geometric underlying, uh, uh, geometry underlying this. But suddenly they arise from quantum mechanics. There is a source of modularized space. So in that sense, there is a geometry. But I don't know if, 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 it has, if this has a counting as an interpretation as a Thomas type invariance uh, in, the, in the geometry. Now, I have a little bit of time, so uh, I can comment very briefly on how to derive these things. So I just define it, and I, I also top down algebras and representations. Uh, but you don't have to guess it, actually, uh, because uh, you can derive them from equivalent localization in supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So, um, so given the data of quiver and potential, super potential, that's the defining data of the quiver Youngian. And then starting that, you can regard that the definition of the supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And, and then there's a well-known well story of there is associated vacuum modular space, and there's a supercharge acting on that, which acts like a, a durable operator uh, or in the complex setup or a differential operator, uh, as in the uh, most functional story of the written. And so there is under a geometry. And, uh, and then furthermore, we introduced the equivalent parameters at some point. And geometrically, these correspond to some omega deformation, regularizing the geometry. And uh, moreover, uh, we started with the total carbia three, so there is secretly a, a torus action. And when you localize the vacuum modular space with the torus action, you have a set of fixed points, uh, and that's represented by the crystal. Now, uh, you can derive the effective wave function on this, uh, uh, on this, uh, on this, on, on this geometry, and that's given by the Euler class. Uh, that's a supersymmetric localization uh, and which people discussed. Uh, and, and this uh, E and F generators, for example. So it's, for example, E generator, that creates an atom, and that creates a lot of the heavy modifications. So uh, adding an atom means uh, adding the uh, length of the uh, gauge group of one in quantum mechanics language. And so you can, uh, we have a physics argument of how to derive it. And it turns out the result coincides with the Fourier Mukai transform in this product modular space in defined as instant locus. That's how, how, how uh, mathematicians define this action. So by using this logic, uh, we obtain very concrete expressions uh, for, uh, for the actions of this uh, uh, algebra uh, arising from BPS states uh, counting. And they, they look slightly different from the uh, quiver youngian representation I talked about. And that's not surprising because in the representation of the algebra, uh, you can change the basis, for example. So you, you might get a different looking expression. But you have to check the, uh, but we can check the commutation relations of the generators. And it turns out that in all the cases we checked uh, in the computer program, uh, they coincide with the quiver Youngian, uh, which I defined earlier. Uh, but uh, but they, they, in general, this requires a complicated computations. And so we can do the computers to check it. But in general, I don't have a, uh, uh, complete proof. Uh, but nevertheless, I, I should say that uh, there, there is certainly a uh, remarkable uh, structure in between, uh, behind. Uh, for example, uh, this is an example of the uh, uh, fine young of GS3 slash one hat, uh, so GS3 slash one. Uh, and then there is some known serial relations, uh, which you can impose in addition to the uh, relations I talked about. So, uh, so this, equal, oh, sorry, I forgot to say this is equal to zero. So that's the serial relations. And so you can try to check that from the equivalent localizations. And it's not obvious if it's zero, but it turns out that uh, uh, if you do the computation from computer programs, then you get some identity, like something like this, where the sum of uh, more than 10 times is equal to zero. 
And, and each of these expressions probably is a little bit too small to see, but it's a function h bar one and h two h bar two. It's a very complicated rational function. But it turns out they sum up to zero somehow. So this is the type of cancellation we see. So the fact that uh, uh, we didn't, uh, uh, yeah, so we didn't, uh, uh, I mean, we, we just computed from the definition of localization and, uh, and then you produce the uh, uh, correct equation, relations in the young, young, young. So that's a highly non trivial check uh, of the statement that the quiver young just do indeed arise. So I think it's time, so let me summarize. So uh, here in this talk, I introduced a new uh, uh, integrable type structure, which I call the quiver young. And uh, so there's a new algebra, and I construct the new representations in terms of the crystal milk. And, there is a, and then there is underlying geometry of supersymmetric current DLC and, uh, uh, and the SUSI quantum mechanics. And as, as usual, everything comes from the uh, string theory and there are a lot to be explored, uh, both in physics and mathematics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there questions? Yes, Alexander. Uh, as, as far as I know, objects are similar to Youngian, uh, sometimes act on uh, some modular spaces like Hilbert scheme, uh, like uh, cohomology of, uh, or uh, K theory of uh, the Hilbert scheme of points or quiver varieties. Do you expect uh, anything like this for your algebra? But yeah, in a sense, it's, a, it's a, well, what we did is essentially that. So in our case, we, 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 construct, we didn't construct directly on the action of the modular uh, cohomologies, the K theory itself themselves, but the latter, uh, we constructed action onto the fixed points, torus fixed point on the more moduli space. Yeah, so so that that's the that's the structure. But uh, so it, essentially, it's I, I I would expect it's the same thing. And uh, uh, although it's so, if you're more geometry oriented, you can try to construct action directly on the moduli space and then try to compare. And, uh, and indeed, for example, there are a couple of nice papers by Jan Solberman and collaborators who did uh, that, and uh, they 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 obtained the similar structures. I think for the case of uh, uh, from our viewpoint, special case of uh, GLX M slash M. So in that, in those cases, they work out the actions uh, more mathematically and then work out the action correctly. And and then uh, they obtain the almost uh, yeah I think very similar at least the structures. And uh, yes, thank you. More questions? So do do these algebras have coproducts? Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. For the young yet, yes. Although. Whenever you talk about the uh, uh, co-product of affine youngians, there is a formal co-product, like you don't care about the convergence, and also more honest uh, actual ones. And uh, the actual ones are complicated. I think, uh, for example, Wei and Nakajima and others had a paper about it, and that's complicated. I don't claim to understand it. But if you don't care about the convergence, et cetera, et cetera there is a formal co-product you can define by the usual formula. And, uh, and the structure is, it becomes a little bit uh, clearer when you go to quantum toroidal and elliptic cases, and that's what we are looking at right now. Okay. More questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again for this nice talk. <laughs>uh, which is a very uh, complicated and interesting topological space appearing in algebraic geometry, algebraic, ah, algebraic topology uh, and uh, physics. Um, I will discuss uh, how the theory of integrable systems um, can be applied to describe a, a, a part of the topology of this modular space. Uh, this was first discovered by Witten uh, in his famous conjecture proved by uh, Kantsevich. Uh, and then,
I will uh, talk about generalizations of Witten's conjecture. I will mention some uh, concrete examples, uh, but uh, mainly focus uh, on uh, uh, on the general framework in which all these examples fit. I will uh, uh, speak about the theory of uh, hierarchies of topological type associated to cohomological field theories. Yeah, and then finally, I will uh, speak about a change of point of view to this subject that was proposed by Dubrovin and Zhang. Uh, so b before we uh, talked how the theory of integrable systems can be applied to describe the topology of the modular space, but Dubrovin and Zhang uh, proposed to use the topology to produce integrable systems. So they uh, proposed to view the hierarchies of topological type as a source of a wide class of integrable systems. Uh, but uh, there are uh, s uh, certain problems in this approach, uh, mainly because the construction of these hierarchies is inexplicit and they have various unproven features. And uh, the main goal of my talk is to introduce a new approach to integrable systems from MGN through the geometry of uh, certain special cycles in this modular space called uh, the double notification cycles. Uh, Okay, so some, first, uh, some basic definitions. So I will consider uh, smooth compact uh, curves uh, with marked points, which we require uh, to be pairwise distinct, and also the curves are required to be connected. Uh, and then I would like to allow uh, the simplest possible singularities on curves that are nodes. Uh, so, that lo uh, so the node uh, locally looks as, uh, uh, as x, y equals zero in the complex plane. And uh, uh, also the marked points are required to be smooth. Then a stable curve uh, is a marked nodal curve such that its automorphism group is finite. Uh, so I must say that uh, the stability is a purely combinatorial property uh, that uh, describes, uh, uh, that restricts how marked points should be uh, distributed on the components of the, on the curve. Okay. And then uh, the modular space of curves, uh, MGN bar, is the set of isomorphism classes of stable algebraic curves of genius G with n marked points. Um, Okay, some, let, let me list some uh, properties. Uh, first of all, the stability implies that uh, this modular space is non-empty if and only if uh, 2g minus 2 plus n is greater than zero. Uh, so in genus zero, we should have at least three marked points and m03 bar is a point, m04 is isomorphic to cp1. And in genus one, we should have at least one marked point and uh, cp1 um, uh, and m11 is isomorphic to cp1 with uh, three orbifold points. Uh, and the topology of this space um, uh, becomes, uh, when the genus and the number of marked points increase, becomes uh, very complicated uh, yeah, very quickly. Uh, but in any case, MGN bar is a compact complex orbifold of dimension 3g minus 3 plus n. And this picture uh, uh, shows, represents um, this modular space. So a general point of, of MGN bar corresponds to a smooth marked curve. And then uh, curves uh, curves with at least one node form a divisor uh, in this uh, space, and then uh, curves with at least two nodes form a, a subvariety of codimension two, etc. Okay, and then uh, uh, let me introduce the intersection numbers. So uh, the same picture. So uh, each point of the modular space corresponds to a marked curve, and we can uh, choose uh, some uh, the ith marked point and consider the cotangent uh, space at this marked point. So we get a family of uh, vector spaces uh, of dimension one over our modular space of curves, and this uh, produces uh, the so-called cotangent line bundles over, uh, over our modular space. They are linear uh, complex vector bundles. And uh, Witten, yeah, considered, oh, so uh, um, even before him, so people considered uh, the Psi classes, which are, uh, which is the Euler class of this uh, line bundle, or in other words, the first gen class, which is an element of the second cohomology group um, of the modular space. And then the intersection numbers are just uh, integrals of uh, monomials in Psi classes over, uh, over, over MGN bar. So if the sum of di's is equal to the dimension of MGN bar, then this is, uh, this is uh, some integral, some number. But if uh, the sum of di's is not equal to the dimension, uh, then this uh, integral is defined to be zero. And then, okay, uh, uh, we do a standard uh, uh, thing in, in combinatorics, so we form a generic series of, of all these numbers. So we consider formal variables, t0, t1, t2, et cetera, epsilon, and uh, uh, form this formal power series that contains all the information about the intersection numbers. Okay, and then here is uh, Witten's conjecture, proved by Kansevich. So it says that the second derivative of, uh, of f of this genetic series is a solution 
uh, of the Cartier diffuse equation. Here is this equation where we identify x with t0. But moreover, uh, this second derivative w of f uh, satisfies the whole hierarchy of infinitesimal symmetries of the KDV equation. So here I uh, present uh, yeah, the next uh, infinitesimal uh, symmetry. Yeah, in general, uh, they look like this. Uh, and uh, uh, so we see that here we take the second derivative, so it looks like we lose some information, but uh, actually no, there is uh, another equation, the so-called string equation, and uh, Witten's conjecture, uh, together with uh, the string equation, determines uniquely all the intersection numbers. Um, so, and so we see how yeah, the theory of integral systems uh, appears in this subject. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but by the way, I should comment what I mean by an integrable system. So, you see that uh, the KDV hierarchy has uh, an, an infinite uh, set of infinitesimal symmetries, and this is actually a very restrictive condition for, uh, for a partial differential uh, equation. And, and for me, an integrable system will be uh, yeah, an infinite sequence an infinite sequence of infinitesimal symmetries uh, of some partial differential equation. Uh, okay, so, uh, and then I will, uh, would like to uh, yeah, mention first developments uh, that appear, appeared uh, soon after uh, Witten. So in these um, uh, developments, the moduli space of course is replaced by a moduli space of course with some additional structure. For example, a map to a target variety as in gromov witten theory or a collection of line bundles as in van jarvis rand witten theory. And uh, here are, uh, I think, the two most famous generalizations of Witten's conjecture. Uh, the first one says that the gromov witten variants of uh, CP1 are controlled by ex the extended order hierarchy. This is uh, a result of Dubrov and Junk. And then the, there was an equivariant version of it by Okunkov and Haripandem. And then uh, uh, there, 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 is, there was another generalization of Witten's original conjecture proposed by him in his uh, other paper uh, that says that the so-called R spin intersection numbers are controlled by the R Yelfandiki hierarchy. This was proved by Faber, Shadrin, Zvonkin. And yeah, now there are uh, many more generalizations. But all these generalizations fit in a certain general framework, and for this I have to introduce some uh, maps, natural maps, between the moduli spaces. So what can we do uh, with curves? So if we have a marked curve, uh, a curve of genius G with n plus one marked points, we can forget, for example, the last marked point and get a, uh, a curve with uh, n marked points. So this gives uh, the so-called forgetful map from MGN plus one bar to MGN bar. And then uh, there is another natural thing that we can do. If we have two uh, marked curves, then we can choose a marked point on the first curve and a marked point on the second curve, and then glue them. And as a result, get a nodal curve. So this gives a map from the product uh, of two moduli spaces to another moduli space. Uh, and this is uh, a gluing map. And there is an, an analog. Uh, an analogous uh, map where we can glue two marked points on the same curve. Okay, and then there is uh, the following uh, key notion, uh, the, f the following notion that plays a key role in the whole subject. So a cosmological field theory is the following data. data. Uh, so so for, for, for objects, uh, a, a finite dimensional vector space, V, some uh, fixed vector in it called the unit, uh, some uh, bilinear form on and non-degenerate, and the main uh, data, piece of data, a collection of linear maps from tensor powers of uh, our vector space to the cohomology of MGN bar. And then uh, <coughs> we, requ we require uh, that they satisfy the following properties. First of all, these maps uh, should be SN equivariant, so obviously we have uh, the SN action on the nth tensor power of V, and uh, we also have the SN action on MGN bar permuting uh, marked points. So we require that S, uh, uh, CGN is SN equivariant. Uh, and then, okay, and then uh, the, uh, these uh, uh, maps should behave uh, naturally with respect to uh, the maps that we have just introduced. Uh, first of all, uh, look at CGN plus one. So here the asterisk represents uh, the product of N vectors. And then uh, the property says that CGN plus one uh, of this product uh, tensor E, the unit should be equal to the pullback under the forgetful map of CGN uh, of this product. Uh, okay, and then uh, there is a, uh, the following exceptional case. So uh, C03 
So C03 is an element of M03 bar, which is a point. So C03 is a number. And uh, the property says that C03 of V tensor W tensor E should be equal to the value of uh, the bilinear form on uh, V and W. And then uh, we have a natural, very natural also properties uh, uh, describing how these uh, maps behave under uh, the two glue maps. Uh, okay, and then uh, yeah, similarly to uh, the intersection numbers, we introduce uh, the correlators of uh, the cohomological field theory. So we just integrate over MGN bar of uh, the product of a monomial MSI classes and an element of our cohomological field theory. And then, yeah, again, we do the standard thing. We introduce the generic in series of all uh, uh, these numbers. So, so T alpha D are form of variables. And so we form the generic in series that contains all the information about these uh, correlators. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, okay, and then FG. Uh, so F contains all the information in all genera, and FG uh, is the generating series of uh, the correlators in genus uh, uh, G. And then, I mean, the main uh, reason why we introduced uh, this object, the cohomological field theory, is that in all generalizations of Witten's conjecture, the associated generating series can be obtained in this way. So this was the crucial uh, observation of Konsevich and Manin. Okay, and then uh, there is uh, the following result, which was conjectured, conjectured by De Bruyne and Junk, and proved um, yeah, in uh, our joint uh, work. So consider an arbitrary semi-simple cohomological field theory. Uh, so the simplicity means that a certain uh, tensor defined by the genus zero data uh, defines an algebra without nil potence. Okay, and then the result uh, is the following. So we can, uh, from this uh, function f, we can uh, form an end tuple of uh, functions. So we can take the second derivatives. Uh, and uh, yeah, you see we, we first take the second the derivative with respect to T10. It corresponds to the unit. Uh, and then, okay, uh, we take the second derivative by other variable. So we get an end tuple of functions. And then the theorem says that there is uh, a system of uh, evolutionary uh, partial differential equations uh, such that uh, this n tuple of functions uh, satisfies this system. And more, moreover, the equations of uh, these systems uh, are pairwise uh, 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 commute. So the flows commute. So they are compatible. All these equations are compatible. So in, so in our terminology, uh, this means that they, f they uh, form an integrable system. Yeah, and uh, moreover, uh, this system is determined by the cohomological field theory uniquely. And it is called the hierarchy of topological type. Uh, and so, as a result, uh, the phenomenon that the correlators of uh, cohomological field theory um, are controlled by an integrable uh, hierarchy is very general. So uh, let me again emphasize, so, uh, so you see that uh, we started from cohomological field theory and get uh, the genetic series of correlators. So this is a clear object. But then the, actually the, this is an existence uh, theorem. So this, I mean, the, this system exists, but uh, there is no, uh, at the moment, explicit uh, formula for, for, for the equations of the hierarchy. Uh, so the proof doesn't give an explicit formula. Uh, so some remarks. Yeah, first of all, uh, just to understand how uh, big uh, the space of uh, semi-simple cohomological field theories is. So the space of semi-simple cohefts is parameterized, roughly speaking, by an infinite sequence of n times n matrices. This is a very deep result of Tilleman. And only for exceptional values of the parameters, the hierarchy uh, of topological type is related to a known integrable system. And for general values of the parameters, the equations of the hierarchy contain uh, an infinite dispersive tail and uh, look mysterious. Uh, and then uh, De Bruyne and Jean uh, uh, proposed to change a view on this subject. Uh, so they noticed uh, that the hierarchies of topological type are actually not special hierarchies. They actually form uh, a very wide class of integrable systems. Yeah, you can imagine that. So uh, I mean, this class is, in a, for any n, it, it is parameterized by an infinite sequence of n times n matrices. Uh, so it's a very wide class of integrable systems. And they uh, conjectured, they ha have a series of conjectures, uh, saying that uh, this class of integrable systems contains all dispersive deformations of dispersionless integrable systems of certain type. Uh, so they have pre some precise conjectures. Uh, but uh, viewing these uh, hierarchies of topological type as a source of integrable systems, uh, there are some disadvantages. And uh, the first one I already mentioned, uh, this is because uh, a straightforward computation of the equations of the hierarchy is uh, problematic. So the theorem is an existence theorem, and it doesn't give a, a good algorithm to compute equations. Uh, 
And also, uh, it's, uh, this, the hierarchy is endowed with further structures, uh, Hamiltonian in general, and uh, conjecturally by Hamiltonian in the homogeneous case, and whose description, uh, starting from the geometry, is even more challenging. And so, so given a CoHFT, uh, a straightforward construction of uh, an associated integrable system is desirable. And yeah, the, my main goal is to uh, present uh, this construction, yeah, uh, what I call the DR hierarchy, and the name uh, is uh, taken from the uh, from the main ingredient, a certain uh, natural uh, cycles in the moduli space of curves called the double unification cycles. And I have to introduce them now. Uh, okay, so let me introduce the DR cycles. This is a very uh, classical object in algebraic geometry. So we fix uh, an n tuple of integers uh, with the vanishing sum, and such that not all of these integers are equal to zero. Uh, and then we consider uh, smooth marked curves such that uh, the divisor uh, A1x1 uh, plus A2x2 plus uh, et cetera, An xn is a principal, uh, meaning that this is a div the divisor of some uh, meromorphic function on our uh, curve. So uh, this gives, um, uh, so this is a condition on, uh, on a mark smooth mark curve, and this defines some subset of MGN without bar, meaning that this, mod this is a modular space of smooth curves. And this is uh, an algebraic uh, subvariety of codimension G. And then uh, uh, there is a way to extend this definition to the whole moduli space, MGN bar, and to include the case uh, when all the uh, AIs are equal to zero. Uh, and then, so we get some cycle in MGN bar. We can take the corresponding homology class and then take the, correspond uh, the Poincare dual in the cohomology and get some uh, class uh, in the cohomology group of degree 2G, uh, which is uh, called uh, the double unification cycle. Uh, and then there is the following fundamental property of this uh, cycle. It depends polynomially on, on, on the AIs. Uh, so th this was proved in this uh, work, Jan de Panhirpanda, Pixton, Zvonkin. Okay, and then, yeah, I can, uh, uh, th there is one more ingredient in the construction, uh, the Hodge vector bundle. So there is, a, again, a classical result in algebraic geometry saying that the space of holomorphic differentials on any stable curve is g-dimensional. So, you see that uh, each point of the moduli space uh, corresponds uh, to a curve, and uh, then we can take the space of holomorphic differentials, obtaining a vector space of uh, dimension G, so we get a family of vector spaces of dimension G over uh, the moduli space. And this uh, gives a, a rank G uh, vector bundle over MGN bar uh, called uh, the Hodge, Hodge bundle. And uh, we will need the Euler class of this Hodge bundle, uh, so which is uh, a cohomology class of degree uh, 2G on MGN bar. And then, so here is uh, the construction. Uh, so we start uh, from an arbitrary cohomological field theory, uh, and then uh, introduce uh, formal variables U alpha D. Uh, uh, yeah, where alpha is between one and N, and uh, D is greater or equal uh, to zero, viewing uh, uh, them uh, as a, um, multiple x derivatives of u alpha. Um, uh, so u alpha will be the dependent variable of um, my hierarchy. And then, okay, for any uh, beta between one and n and uh, non-negative d, we introduce the following object. So let us do it step by step. So uh, first of all, um, so consider mgn plus one bar and consider the following cohomology class. So we take psi one to power d, the Hodge, uh, the Euler class of the Hodge bundle, then uh, CGN plus one of E beta tensor, uh, the tensor product of E alpha I. So where we choose alpha one, alpha N. And then we can take the tensor product with uh, DRG. Uh, so, okay, we, we uh, fix um, uh, the, so B1, BN, and then, okay. Uh, so we fix the second entry at the third and uh, the N plus ones, the N plus ones. Okay, and then the sum of entries should be zero. So the first uh, entry is minus sum of BIs. So we get some cohomology class that depends on our choices, on alpha one, alpha n, and b1, bn. Uh, and we take the integral of uh, this class over mgn plus one bar. Uh, we get some number. Uh, so we uh, re remember that we uh, chose alpha one, alpha n, and b1, bn. So we get uh, something that depends on alpha one, alpha n, b1, bn. And then I also told you that uh, the double unification cycle uh, is a polynomial. Uh, depends polynomially, so uh, this number uh, is a polynomial in B1, Bn. And then uh, let us take the coefficient of B1 to the power D1, et cetera, Bn to the power Dn. So we get some number, 
uh, okay. and that depends on our choices, on the choice of alpha 1, alpha n, and d1, dn. And then we multiply it by u alpha 1, d1, u alpha n, dn, and then take the uh, generating series of all the choices that we made. So we uh, uh, sum over uh, all, all genera and number of marked points and overall uh, choices of uh, alpha 1, alpha n, uh, d1, dn. Where we, uh, uh, where we also uh, restrict uh, the sum of the i's, which we say that the sum of the i's should be equal to 2g. Okay, and then we, give, we, we get some um, formal power series, uh, which is uh, yeah, formal power series in epsilon, whose coefficients are uh, actually uh, polynomials in the derivatives of u alpha, uh, whose coefficients are formal power series. And this is, yeah. Uh, these objects are called uh, differential polynomials in the theory of integrable systems. And then, yeah, the result is uh, the following. So now we, we consider uh, we can consider the following system of evolutionary partial differential equations. So, uh, so you see, I mean, we have some differential polynomials, and okay, we take the variation of derivatives delta over delta u mu, yeah, and take the yeah, at alpha mu, the inverse of the matrix of the uh, our bilinear form. In the in 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 the fixed uh, basis, okay. So we, we get some differential polynomials, and we just use these uh, differential polynomials as the right hand sides of some system of partial differential equations. Yeah. So I mean, the left hand side is just a formal expression. Yeah. So we, we, u alpha is a, a formal variable. Yeah. So I mean, it's not a derivative. So we just used uh, we just use these uh, differential polynomials as the uh, right hand sides of some. Uh, system of, of evolutionary partial differential equations with one special variable. Um, yeah, okay, I mean, we can then st try to study solutions, uh, but I mean, we, at the moment, uh, for today, we don't do it, so we just get a system. So, and then, I mean, the, the result says that the flows of the system uh, pairwise commute, and we call the system the DR hierarchy. Uh, so, I mean, again, I would like to em emphasize the uh, yeah, crucial difference from the hierarchy of topological type. In that story, we uh, get a hierarchy with a clear solution, but the equations uh, yeah, are mysterious. They exist, uh, but um, they're mysterious. Here, the story is opposite. So the equations are, uh, I mean, are clear. So you see, I mean, this, uh, the definition uh, can be put on one slide, uh, but uh, but but the solution is not clear. Okay, we know something ab about it, but uh, I mean, I cannot tell tell, tell it today. Uh, okay, so uh, and then some properties. So uh, yeah, then. Uh, well, we can make some computations, and it occurs that uh, many known integrable systems appear as the DR hierarchy, like KDV, intermediate long wave, instead of TODA, and some of Hargill, Van Dicke, and Drinsfeld Sokolov. Conjecturally, all of them, but okay, the moment we can prove only for some of Hargill, Van Dicke, and Drinsfeld Sokolov. Uh, and uh, okay, and then uh, actually one of the main uh, things is that uh, the construction is very general. Uh, first of all, simplicity is not needed, and also it works for generalized cohomological field theories for which we don't have the hierarchy of topological type. For example, the unit is not needed, and uh, actually we can avoid um, bilinear form at the cost of losing part of the structures. Uh, and also, I mean, we can relax uh, even more uh, properties of cohomological field theories. Uh, and then, okay, and then uh, another remarkable thing is that the DR hierarchy has a very rich algebraic structure, which uh, can be described very explicitly in terms of the geometry. Okay, first of all, there's a very simple Hamiltonian structure uh, with a very simple Poisson uh, bracket. But then there's a bi-Hamiltonian structure, which, can, which has also very direct description in terms of the geometry. Uh, okay, but uh, yes, uh, I mean, n n some proofs are, uh, are missing. Uh, so I mean, this is uh, this uh, it is not closed at the moment, uh, but the formula is is, is clear. I mean, the problem is to prove that the bracket uh, is really a Poisson bracket, and then we ha that we have a Hamiltonian recursion. But the formula is very explicit. Okay, and then we also have a very explicit quantization and the quantum tau function. Uh, and then I, I finish uh, with uh, some conjectures. Yeah, first of all, uh, in the semi-simple case, the DR hierarchy is conjecturally equivalent to the hierarchy of topological type by a polynomial change of variables. Uh, which are called uh, in the theory of integrable systems uh, mu transformations. Uh, and then also uh, the class of DR hierarchies, I mean, similar to the hierarchies of topological type, conjecture contains all dispersive deformations of 
dispersionless systems of certain type up to mirror transformations. Uh, th th there are various uh, conjectures about uh, about it. Yeah, they are mostly con uh, most, mostly conjectural results, but there are some partial results. But uh, yeah, and the last thing that I would like to emphasize. So. Uh, uh, Again, the difference between uh, this story and the story of the hierarchies of topological type. Yeah, first of all, uh, that construction uh, I mean, exists only for semi-simple cohomological field theories and for generalized uh, cohomological field theories is problematic. Uh, so, and uh, so this construction is much more general. It can it allows to approach much more integrable systems to approach more classification problems. Yeah, and also, I mean, the DR hierarchy of topological, uh, DR hierarchy uh, admits a very direct and explicit uh, description uh, starting from the geometry. Uh, okay, so with this I finish, and, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, are there questions? Yes. Um, thank you for a nice talk. Uh, so you mentioned uh, there is a natural construction of the Poisson bracket. Could you say some more words about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't have time to present it. Yeah, I think it's uh, one of the, uh, it's, a, it's a very beautiful construction. Uh, so, I mean, there's an explicit formula. So in terms of these, uh, I introduced uh, these uh, Hamiltonians. Um, uh, but, this, uh, but, but already that's a Poisson bracket on what? Um, yeah, on the space of uh, local functionals, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have this space of local functionals of the form integral yeah, GDX, and then yeah, mm -hmm. there is some explicit formula uh, for some for Poisson uh, bracket that is compatible with this uh, simple Poisson bracket. Yeah, and then uh, we, uh, we have some results that it has constant central variance, and uh, yeah, we have some yeah, partial results, but a very explicit formula, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. More questions? So, so, do you see in this hierarchy those parameters that you were mentioning, this infinite sequence of uh, yes, matrices? Yes, of, it is. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, this uh, uh, given um, Tillman uh, classification uh, is very explicit. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it is very explicit. So, uh, uh, by an infinite sequence of n times n matrices. So, uh, so given these matrices, uh, we can form uh, a sum of some combinatorial objects, so-called stable graphs, uh, uh -huh. decorated stable graphs. Yeah, and then there is a very explicit formula for these cohomological field theories. Okay. So please wait a, a second. I have to give you the medal. I forgot. <laughs> Thank you. You're Okay, so the next speaker is uh, uh, Didina Serban from the Institut de Physique Théorique in Saclay, and she will talk about the Q-deformed haldane shastri model. I will first give you the medal, otherwise I forget. You're welcome. Okay, please. Uh, yes, uh, I would like uh, first to uh, thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to um, to present uh, my work uh, in this uh, congress. So uh, it's a work uh, together with uh, my collaborators uh, Julie Lammers and uh, Vincent Pasquier. Uh, the driving force of the uh, the work is uh, Jules. Uh, so um, it's about a model, an old model, uh, which was defined uh, in the 90s, and uh, it was forgotten for a while uh, uh, because it uh, looked uh, maybe uh, too complicated. And uh, 
to 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 get uh, some explicit results on it. But uh, uh, now we have some uh, um, some results on the uh, oh yeah sorry thank you. Uh, some, some results on the uh, wave functions of the um, deformed haldane shastri model. So uh, the motivation to, uh, to study uh, this model is um, to get uh, any, any results on uh, long-range integrable models uh, are welcome. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a subject where uh, the progress is rather uh, slow, uh, and they, these models are in, uh, uh, are uh, interesting from the what from the um, I, I'm trying to use the pointer but I forgot how it works no that's uh, the okay uh, so the pointer should be this uh, no pointer is this okay keep it ah okay I have to keep it pressed okay uh, thank you so. Uh, uh, there are plenty of uh, um, deformations of integrable models, but uh, we, we don't really have uh, information about their mathematical structure. Uh, so any, uh, any uh, information about uh, uh, precise model is uh, useful. Uh, so uh, um, since this... Uh, uh, si since this model is uh, old enough that uh, somebody, uh, s some people in the audience uh, have never heard uh, about this, uh, the, the usual uh, non-deformed haldane shasti model, I, I will start with presenting uh, this. So um, it's a model um, uh, of n spins on a regular lattice, so you, you can say they are, uh, they are situated at the root, uh, nth root of unit, unity on a unit circle. The exchange, uh, the spin exchange is given by this um, uh, permutation uh, operator and there is a, all the spins on the chain are interacting with this one over sine square potential. And the model is uh, particular in the, in the sense that uh, uh, it has a uh, Yangian symmetry, so this, this gives a, a highly degenerate uh, uh, spectrum. And the, the spectrum is uh, the wave functions are encoded by motifs, which are collections of in integer uh, numbers, uh, which are collection of integer numbers between one and n minus one, which uh, w which obey this uh, the uh, the rule that they are uh, separated by at least two units. So uh, these are the, the, the black dots here are the occupation uh, uh, numbers of the, uh, let, let's call them magnons, the excitations. Uh, so in, uh, um, uh, alternatively, the, the, the motif is, uh, is uh, encoded by, by uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, partition, um, some uh, uh, numbers. Uh, uh, integer numbers, uh, and the, the spectrum is perfectly additive in the sense that it's a sum of uh, individual um, uh, energies which are given by this uh, very simple dispersion relation. Um, okay, um, the, uh, this model is a uh, is, is, uh, member of a uh, bigger family of uh, integrable models, so the, it's, uh, it's in uh, this corner here, but there is an extension, one parameter extension of the uh, potential. Um, uh, the, the potential can be um, uh, described by this uh, Weierstrass uh, uh, elliptic function with uh, uh, periods, the, the size of the uh, um, chain and uh, there's another uh, parameter which is uh, which controls the the strength of the interaction, and in the in the uh, opposite limits uh, you 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 can find the uh, Heisenberg model. So it's a very uh, it's good to have uh, this interpolating model in order to 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 uh, uh, know how to uh, uh, how how the um, the special relation and the other quantities uh, can be related continuously to, to, to this model, which is uh, uh, much more well known in, in physics. 
Unfortunately, the algebraic structure of this uh, model is, uh, is very little known and the uh, spectrum and the wave functions are, are rather complicated. So let me, uh, uh, let me say a few words how to solve uh, the, Halde, the usual Halde-Shastri model. Uh, the way to do it is to embed it into this, uh, to a more complicated model or uh, where, where the uh, particles can, can move. Now uh, uh, the, Z, the Zs are um, coordinates uh, which are uh, variables. So there is some momentum uh, uh, part in the Hamiltonian. Uh, and there is another parameter in the potential, uh, which is beta, uh, which, and from this uh, Hamiltonian, you can get uh, back the uh, Halden Shastri Hamiltonian by sending beta to infinity and rescaling. So, uh, sorry, the are potential. we seeing the right slide? Or? Sorry? Ah, sorry? It only changed now. I think you were talking about this. I, I was talking about this, yeah. Okay, so this uh, uh, Hamiltonian can be diagonalized on uh, functions of uh, spins and uh, coordinates. So the spins are, are uh, the uh, sp spin vectors are denoted by this uh, uh, cat vector. Uh, these components are uh, functions of, uh, of the coordinates. Um, and we want to, to work, so uh, uh, we, um, uh, we remove this part here, uh, the, this uh, trivial uh, uh, van der Monde to the power beta part. And the rest we want to impose either uh, to be totally symmetric or uh, anti-symmetric uh, by exchange of uh, 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 coordinates and spin. Uh, in the most, most of my talk I will, uh, I will uh, concentrate on the plus sign, but the minus sign is also uh, possible. So. If I impose this symmetry, uh, then if I impose this symmetry, then uh, these components will be partially symmetric or anti-symmetric in, in two groups of variables. Uh, the ones which involve uh, I1 to IM, Z I1 to IM, or, or the complement. Uh, and when you, when you send uh, beta to infinity, of course, you'll get, uh, uh, you will you, get you are doing this uh, freezing uh, procedure, which which will fix the variables to their equilibrium position, which are the roots of unity. So when you are doing this, the, this uh, partially symmetric or anti-symmetric uh, functions in in the z variables, um, since since the symmetric sums uh, uh, when the z are uh, roots of unity will be uh, zero except if uh, n is uh, a zero, a zero modulo n. So in this case, uh, you can reduce this, uh, this, this function here to, to a completely symmetric function of just one group of variables, let's say z1 to z, uh, z1, i1 to z i m. So this will be, uh, this will give uh, the, uh, the wave functions of my uh, Halden Shastri spin uh, Hamiltonian. So, since uh, since the wave functions of uh, Calogero Sutherland model are known to be uh, non symmetric, partially symmetrized uh, uh, Jack polynomials, uh, the, this, the, the, this limiting procedure uh, should uh, give some uh, uh, definite answer, uh, but uh, but this procedure was never carried out explicitly. So uh, in order to know what, what these wave functions are, in fact, uh, uh, the, the people who, who studied uh, this uh, model uh, in the 90s devised a different procedure to, 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 to get these uh, uh, eigenfunctions explicitly. And it was found that they are Jack polynomials uh, for some uh, particular value of the, the beta parameter, which is equal to two. So that's another, another special value of, uh, uh, of beta. <coughs> so uh, um, that's a kind of mysterious result. Uh, this, by the way, gives, uh, uh, gives immediately the spectrum of uh, the, the, the motifs that I have uh, presented earlier. So uh, that's, that's, that's the result for Haldi Shastri. 
Uh, now, um, if you want to uh, uh, to deform this um, Hamiltonian, so uh, one one wants to uh, deform the exchange such that the spin exchange looks like XXZ. Uh, uh, in the same time, keeping the long-range uh, interaction and uh, keeping the integrability. So, uh, the, the way to do it was suggested in uh, in this paper in '93, uh, and uh, then the model was uh, worked out by Uglov in the '90s, and then uh, forgotten. And then uh, uh, sorry, this is the wrong slide. I mean, the slide shown there is not the slide you are talking about. Yeah, but that's what I, I have on Yeah, my but maybe screen, somebody sorry. can correct this. Yeah, uh, okay, I will up. Uh, okay. Uh, but, yeah, so now I can't, uh, I see something different on my, on my, uh, on my screen, so I will try to, to, to talk like this. So, um, Okay, so uh, the spin uh, the spin operator now uh, has uh, so if uh, you you take this uh, nearest neighbor exchange which is which is deformed Q deformed and then you have to transport in order to get the long range you, you transport it to 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 the site uh, uh, ZJ using the, this uh, R matrix and then. Uh, so yeah, uh, that that's part of the the answer. And then, uh, okay, the R matrix is the XXZ R matrix. And then, so uh, so if you are looking at the nearest neighbor interaction, it takes this uh, XXZ uh, form. And the potential has this uh, uh, um, expression where the uh, double uh, pole became. Uh, um, uh, two, two simple poles, and this model is uh, so. This model is uh, integrable. Uh, th there are two versions. There is, there is a chiral and antichiral version where you transport uh, the the spin to the left or to the right. Uh, these two Hamiltonians commute, uh, and uh, both they have some dispersion relations where uh, you you go from the end to the other by sending q to q minus one. Uh, if you sum them, uh, you get some dispersion relation which is symmetric, otherwise the dispersion relations are a little bit uh, uh, tilted. And the states are characterized by the sa same motifs, and the Yangian symmetry is replaced by the affine quantum symmetry. Um, okay, again, uh, I switched the slide, but I, I don't have the good slide. Again, to uh, to solve this model, uh, you better embed it into a, a, a model where the z's, the coordinates, can can be shifted. So the, there is a shift operator uh, denoted by this p, which uh, shifts uh, the coordinate z. Uh, so the the uh, Hamiltonian uh, which described the, the new model can be. Uh, represented by this uh, uh, drawing here, so you you transport your spins with the R matrix, uh, then you shift, and then you transport it back. So if you if you are taking this uh, the sum of these uh, uh, um, different bits, you get a, 
integrable um, uh, Hamiltonian, which uh, in the limit, uh, in the appropriate limit, uh, gives you back the spin uh, uh, Calogero Sutherland model. Um, how to uh, how to solve the, how to uh, give an algebraic description of this um, uh, this model is uh, before we were working with the um, permutation uh, algebra. Now we are uh, we, we replace the permutation with the Hecke algebra. So the first line is the same. The, the, the generators obey the same relations for the permutations, but the second relation p square is equal one is replaced by this Hecke relation. And there is a, um, uh, th there are representations of this uh, Hecke algebra on the polynomials. Uh, uh, you, you can build them uh, using the permutation of coordinates, uh, or you you can uh, uh, have it on uh, representation on the spins. The representation on the spins is defined implicitly by this relation with the. Um, X, X, Z, uh, X, Z, Z, R matrix. Now, in order to, uh, to, to uh, agree with the uh, notations uh, which are usual for the McDonald uh, uh, polynomials and McDonald Hamiltonian, uh, the, the uh, Roman Q becomes uh, T square root of T and P becomes uh, uh, Q. So, uh, so we have these two copies of the uh, Hecke algebra. Once uh, we we have them, let's forget for a moment uh, about the spin uh, generators. Uh, starting from the polynomial Hecke algebra, one can define these uh, uh, um, complicated operators y i, which are called uh, um, Cherednik uh, operators. Uh, they are defining uh, uh, functions of these uh, 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 generators, dress generators of the uh, Hecke algebra. They obey some uh, uh, relations, uh, um, uh, exchange relation uh, with, with the Hecke polynomial Hecke generators. So th this w this uh, will be the affine Hecke algebra, and together with the action of the Hecke generators on on the z's, uh, this gives a double uh, affine Hecke algebra. And the symmetric polynomials in yi commute uh, with, uh, with the t generators, and they commute with themselves. They, they, are, uh, they are defined such that they are commuting among themselves. So this, uh, this symmetric, uh, uh, elementary symmetric polynomials in y's are, if you want, the uh, Hamiltonians of the, uh, commuting Hamiltonians of the model. And these uh, objects, this, this yi, are diagonalized on the non-symmetric uh, McDonald polynomials. So they are well characterized uh, objects. So now, how how do I get um, a spin model from this purely coordinate model? So, uh, now uh, I, I introduce this <coughs> a space, which is the equivalent of my bosonic space uh, uh, in the case of uh, usual uh, halden shastri So uh, uh, H tilde, this is the, the physical space. Uh, it's a space where the, the polynomial Hecke generators act like the spin Hecke uh, operators. So I can transform one, one into the other. Let's say the, the polynomial into spins. So now the, the, this uh, sums of the, uh, of, of the uh, Cherednik operators uh, restricted on, on the space H they become, uh, I can interpret them, them as operators acting on, on spins, and then they become these uh, McDonald spin operators. <laughs> and uh, uh, equivalent, uh, and uh, of course, for the higher, uh, uh, higher conserved charges, if I take the elementary uh, 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 symmetric functions in Ys, I also can project them on this, uh, restrict them on this page, space H tilde. So they will be the, my higher uh, conserved Hamiltonians. Uh, so the next, the next step will be in order to, to build a, a, a spin uh, model and uh, with, with an algebraic structure, we'll, we'll uh, uh, um, build a monodomy matrix 
starting from the from our uh, R matrix, which obey uh, Young Baxter. If you want to construct uh, the XXZ in homogeneous model, you just uh, multiply uh, the R matrices at uh, different sites with with some um, with some uh, shift in the uh, spectrum parameter. And if you want to to build the long range model, instead of uh, uh, inserting the uh, some uh, in homo uh, scalar inhomogeneities, you are inserting these Cherednik operators, which will encode the, lar the long range uh, interaction of the, of the model. Um, remarkably, the, this monodromy matrix L tilde uh, preserves the physical space, so uh, one can. Um, uh, one can consistently uh, do this projection of, uh, of the Ys on the physical space. Uh, among other things, so one, if, uh, if one takes, if one, uh, takes the quantum determinant of this uh, L matrix, it commutes with all the elements of the, of the algebra, uh, A, B, C, D. Uh, A, B, C, D are the, 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 the uh, four elements of uh, L tilde in the auxiliary space. So the quantum determinant of uh, this uh, um, of, of L will, will have this form here. So if I replace Z with Y, uh, I, can, I can just write uh, the quantum determinant as, as, uh, as this delta object here over shifted delta. So I can, uh, since the quantum determinant commutes with all the algebra, the, 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 uh, the, the generators, uh, the generator delta of V of uh, conserved quantity will commute with, with the whole monodromy matrix. So this explains the symmetry of the model and the fact that uh, uh, the spectrum is uh, uh, organized uh, according to the representations of the quantum of uh, algebra SU2. Uh, so now if you want from, to get from the dynamical model, if you want to get uh, back the, uh, the, the uh, um, pure spin model, you have to send the new, this new parameter Q to, to 1 to freeze the particle in the equilibrium position. So uh, in order to get, the, to extract the uh, the spin uh, Hamiltonian, you take the, the uh, McDonald uh, uh, Russian Russ operator, uh, expand it in, in powers of Q minus one, and the first non trivial uh, uh, part in this expansion will be this uh, uh, the, the Hamiltonian that I have presented you earlier. And the other, uh, the other Hamiltonians are uh, um, uh, found in the expansion of this uh, uh, delta of U in powers of Q minus one. And since Oh, sorry, oops. Uh, since uh, the, uh, the spectrum of, uh, we know the spectrum of Y operators because it's, uh, it's diagonalized on non-symmetric McDonald operators. Uh, so the, w we, from this procedure, we uh, also obtain the, the energies of the, uh, of the states and it, it can be verified that this formula with, uh, with a, some uh, particular partition lam lambda tilde, which is rela re related to lambda, but not uh, identically uh, uh, equal. <coughs> so this, this relation here allows to get the, the dispersion relation that I have uh, shown you earlier. So that these things were known before. Uh, what was not known uh, was how to get the uh, the, the wave functions. Uh, again, if you are starting with the dynamical model, you know what the wave functions are because uh, these polynomials uh, here, the coordinate uh, part, uh, will be given by, by non-symmetric uh, um, McDonald polynomials. But then you have to take the Q goes to one limit of this partially symmetric uh, 
McDonald operators. So uh, it's not obvious what uh, which one will survive and what this procedure gives. So uh, we have you have to do some something else. Uh, so this uh, uh, computation was is uh, rather involved. But uh, if you one can show that the the components uh, the, the simplest component of the uh, of, of this wave function is when the reversed spins are uh, i1, im are on the position 1 to m, uh, like uh, like here. Uh, and this will be just the evaluation of the, some, uh, some polynomial uh, at the roots of unity. And this, this polynomial here will be given by uh, some uh, uh, van der Monde, Q van der Monde, uh, um, Product of uh, two, two Q van der Mons with Q and Q min uh, minus one, and some uh, McDonald polynomial uh, with some uh, particular parameters where Q star and T star are related by this relation, and they are related to the uh, initial Q deformation parameter by this by this relation. Uh, so that's the first uh, uh, component which is symmetric. Uh, the the other components are uh, look look more, more ugly if uh, uh, you, you are looking at their explicit expressions. But in fact, given the symmetry properties of the global wave functions, you can you can just see that you have to transport the uh, the coordinates z1 to zm by this. Uh, uh, Hecke operators uh, that uh, so you 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 apply them to transport uh, the sites one to m to i one to i m uh, and that's that's the solution of the problem and and, and that's the solution of the one one of one uh, uh, the highest uh, the equivalent of the highest weight uh, vector of the multiplet the others are are a little bit more complicated to to get. So, uh, uh, to conclude, we have uh, obtained uh, new information about the wave functions uh, of this uh, Q-deformed uh, model. Uh, it's, uh, th there are some things which are, uh, uh, are open, for example, what, uh, how, how to construct the eigenvectors directly from the freezing procedure, what, what are the rules, which are the uh, polynomials which survive uh, the, this freezing procedure, which are vanish, vanishing, that it, that's something uh, that was not done. We have information about the uh, so-called crystal limit when Q goes to infinity. So that that's a limit uh, which uh, which uh, raised uh, interest recently in connection with different models. Uh, for example, for XXZ model, this limit was considered uh, recently by, by some of our colleagues. Uh, the, there is the question how to build the, the other uh, states in the multiplet, uh, starting from the highest weight. Um, and then uh, there are questions related to the, to the uh, continuous large, large N limit. Uh, what's the spectrum um, around the, the antiferromagnetic ground state? Uh, the, we know that for Halden Shastri, uh, we get some uh, conformal field theory description uh, and vertex operator, Katz Moody uh, uh, level one uh, algebra. So uh, there should some, be some uh, related um, description for this uh, uh, model. And uh, this is uh, uh, um, the fermionic. Uh, the, the, um, a description is much more useful for this, but it's also a little bit more complicated to, to deal with. There are some, uh, there are, uh, um, there is some uh, uh, framework which was uh, established in the 90s uh, by, by the Japanese school. Other questions are, uh, can one uh, go to the, to, the, to the hyperbolic limit? We know that we can send the root of unity to, uh, to some uh, uh, real value of the uh, of uh, so we, we can do this analytical continuation and we will go to some hyperbolic version so uh, that's that's a good question if we get a, 
still an integrable model by, by doing this. Uh, of course, there is the, the question of what happens at uh, uh, root, Q root of infinity uh, for, for this model. Uh, and uh, uh, it's interesting to know for, for Halde Shastri, knowing the um, wave functions explicitly allow to compute the correlation functions. And, uh, there is a relation with random, random matrices. Uh, it's it's uh, interesting to know what uh, what the correlation functions are for these models, and there are some uh, uh, applications to to uh, condensed matter uh, physics uh, transport uh, uh, in uh, non-equilibrium systems, which uh, uh, could also be addressed in this in this context. So yeah. that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for this clear talk. Uh, are there questions? Yes, Alexander. Maybe you can say a few more words about ran random matrix models, uh, what kind of integrals they appear. Yeah, so uh, 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 in, the, uh, in the case of uh, Halden Shastri uh, uh, ground state, uh, is uh, related to to the uh, distribution of eigenvalues of for uh, for the uh, unitary symplectic ensemble, if I uh, remember correctly. So uh, Martin Zirnbauer and uh, Haldane use this connection to to, to compute the corre correlation functions in uh, uh, um, in the Haldane Shastri model. And here, the, 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 there is uh, one can engineer some uh, matrix model which will give uh, a wave func uh, uh, distribution which, which, is, uh, uh, which resembles to this. More questions? So about the first question you asked, uh, so this freezing procedure, is it just a question of substituting uh, roots of unity at, at, as values, or, or do you also have to do some kind of semi-classical um, variational problem? No, no need of semi-classical uh, variational problem. Uh, the only thing is that uh, um, many, oops, um, many wave functions will, will vanish because of this uh, vanishing of the symmetric sums, uh, so uh, most of the sp of the spectrum of the of uh, Calogero will will disappear, will dec decouple, uh, and there are some states which will survive. Uh, we know the rules for these uh, polynomials to 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 be non-vanishing, but we don't know the reason uh, behind behind this. Okay, thank you. If there are no further questions, let's thank the speaker again. And we close the session. <laughs>